for watching Baptist Health's Resource Live, where our respected experts bring you timely and practical health and wellness information to improve your family's way of life. We're healthcare that cares. This is Resource Live. Hello everyone, more than a year after the pandemic abruptly forced millions of people to start working from home, many employers getting ready to bring workers back to the office. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm journalist Nikki Mohan coming to you live from the Baptist Health Newsroom. Rather than relief, the idea of in-person office work has provoked anxiety, dread, and even panic. I'm sure many of you watching can relate. We have with us experts from the Baptist Health family to talk to you about how to calm and manage this back-to-work anxiety. I'd like to welcome Amy Exum and Carmen Barisi, both psychotherapists with the Community Health and Wellness here at Baptist Health South Florida. A pleasure to have you both with us. Looking forward to this, ladies. Before we dive in today's subject, I want to remind all of you watching, send in your questions and comments throughout the segment. We're here for you. This is your discussion. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. We're going to start with Amy. Amy, more than two-thirds of workers say they're feeling apprehensive about returning to the office. Why do you think people are still feeling anxiety? And what are you hearing about people returning to in-person workplaces? Hi, Nikki, and, and first, thanks for having us here. Yeah, lots of different reasons, and, and, and they're going to be different for each person. But the trends that we're looking at right now First is safety. You know, people are still concerned about their safety. What will the workplace look like and how will I be able to stay safe? Based on my personal situation, some people have little kiddos who haven't been able to be vaccinated yet, or they may have underlying conditions and are still worried about how they're going to keep themselves protected. So safety is one of the main issues people are still anxious. Next one is time management. We, or maybe I should say I, learn to live a new life without having to commute to work every day, spending hours in the car or on a train where we could actually do something else. So some people are worried about, you know, I don't want to sit in the car anymore. Some people are worried about the time management when it comes to spending time with their little kiddos. They've realized that they can capitalize on those moments since they are working from home. Will they start to miss some of those uh, special moments or opportunities with their kids or pets and fur babies as well? And then some people have become caregivers or continue to be caregivers as we've gone through the pandemic. And again, their time is limited and being able to work from home gives them that flexibility to be able to multitask, do some things that they need to do personally and take care of their work. Um, lastly, I would say people have started to reprioritize. You know, we were just talking about it a minute ago. As we've gone through the pandemic, a lot of things that were important to us before aren't as important now and vice versa. And so people are really redefining what work and what life mean for them. And for some of those people, they say, I don't want it to be the same anymore. And, and lastly, people have choices. A lot of um, new offices are opening, uh, opening up remote positions. And so some people are saying, well, why do I have to do this if I can do it completely remote anymore? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, I remember having, you know, when my daughter was little and you're racing from work and you're like, oh my God, am I going to make it to daycare on time? Are they going to charge me that 10 bucks a, a, time max exactly. a, a minute for being late when I get there? You know, Carmen, so many people got used to not spending time in their cars commuting, like, like Amy just said, and being able to work in their pajamas. What are some benefits employees will see of going back to the office? I know I like coming in person because Whenever I'm doing a Zoom, somebody has to walk behind me. Somebody has to get ice from the ice maker or the dog all of a sudden wants to say hello. There are, diff there are definitely silver linings to going back to work. Some of them include that increase in productivity. For example, um, like you mentioned, there are a lot of distractions going on. It has its benefits working from remote, but when we're in person in an office, there's that space. Okay, I'm, I'm getting work done. Our, our mind frame is a little bit different than having to deal with all the distractions that are going on um, when we have our workspace at home. In addition, there's also that sense of collaboration. You get to see your coworkers, you get to see your leaders, and you're able to streamline communication. What becomes a thread of email could be walking over to the office and giving that information right, right in the moment. 
also there's that opportunity to brainstorm and collaborate and generate ideas, as well as that socialization aspect. So when we socialize with our coworkers, we feel more connected to the agencies that we're working for and also engaged. Um, in addition, um, one of the things that we've seen when we transition to remote work is kind of that blurred uh, space when it comes to your workspace is becoming your it's in your house. So we're adding that physical boundary. So now you were able to disconnect whether it's that drive home or leaving work at home, which I think and as we as we look at can be one of the benefits when returning to work. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I'm just looking forward for everybody not thinking I'm a short order chef. I mean, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, like you need three square meals a day. How did you get this before <laughs> I was home all the time? Like, really, honestly, <laughs> gender roles. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Amy, there's been an absence of social interaction that our brains expect over the past year and change. How could our brain have changed during this time of social isolation and working from home? And which of those changes impact returning to work post pandemic? I mean, so many people had to get used to wearing pants again. We saw so many of those unfortunate Zoom moments. And, um, you know, I mean, there's, there's some things that, what should you do if you know you have to go back into the office to get yourself ready so that the first day you're not scrambling? I'm just so glad I was, I, I never had that incident. <laughs> <laughs> um, all, all great questions, Nikki. So, you know, I don't have to lay it out to anyone, the amount of stress that we've been dealing with for the past year and a half, you know, that chronic stress we know over time really impacts our brain, our, our ability to function at that, you know, higher level that we've been used to functioning. And um, chronic stress impacts the parts of our brain that deal with executive functioning. So executive functioning really means the decision-making part of our brain, the part of our brain um, that helps us plan or has already impacted the learn the part of our brain that we deal with when it comes to learning and also memory. So I don't know if anyone has had this instance. I'm sure no one out there has ever forgotten what they did yesterday through the pandemic. Oh, I don't know what day it is. I don't know what day it is. What day it is? What day of the week? What time is it? I think today's Thursday. It's not. Um, and you know, or just like the basics of how you know, wait, which way do I go to get to work again? I mean, a lot of us are dealing with that fog because we've gone out of that habit. Now you mentioned something else before, which is that social isolation. Social isolation feelings of loneliness, they also impact our memory. In fact, researchers have looked at it. People who've already had struggles with memory will struggle even more. The impacts are even greater. So those are the brain changes that are happening as we've been dealing with the pandemic. Now, the good news is that actually there are a lot of things that we can do to combat that our brains, um, we have this concept called neuroplasticity. It's, it's one of my favorite concepts, so I'll try to be quick about it and not long, but neuroplasticity is basically our brain's ability to form new connections, not necessarily new cells, but new connections and, and change our brain structure. And so we can do that, and we can combat that by getting physical activity in, by doing things like meditation, by learning new things. Now, if we start to get into that, to that zone now and practice those things, it'll be easier when we go back into the workplace. Um, some of it is building up these habits and also knowing that it's, it's just gonna take some time. You know, it, just as it was so awkward, I remember going to the grocery store in the beginning of the pandemic. I didn't know like, you know, how to situate myself and hand sanitizer and all that. Those one-way aisles drove me crazy. <laughs> I was always, aisles. it was like when I started driving like a one-way street, which way is one way? And you know, how do you remember all this? Exactly. So we'll get just as we're now we're pros at it, right? Um, we'll get back into it as we go into the workplace. But if you have been feeling some of that fog, that fogginess, the struggle with memories, just know that you're not alone, especially the fact that a lot of our days have just looked exactly the same. My Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it was hard through the pandemic because we couldn't leave. We didn't have that environmental enrichment, the fun things to do outside, the fun things to try. Um, that's changing now. So it'll really help us as we transition back to the in-person workspace. Yeah. I mean, some of us, we, we have to get used to wearing makeup again. I mean, you know, sitting at home, you know, and not many of us at pajamas, all these lounge Zoom wear. filters. I've thrived off of Zoom filters. I'll be real. <laughs> Listen, Listen, they say the plastic surgeons are getting more work because everybody noticed way. They're, they're not used to looking at themselves. 
that much. Uh, Carmen, much of the anxiety experience comes from the unknown. How can we mentally start preparing to return to work? Because, you know, we need our jobs. So we have to go back. And quite frankly, a lot of us, if we're fortunate, we do something we love, we can reconnect to it. Right, definitely. So speaking of, of clothes, that, that factor, um, so some tips, do practice a dress rehearsal. So if you know you're going back to work in a few weeks, check out your closet, what would you like to wear? Because I know some- with If you could fit in anything. <laughs> Right, and if not, you work around it, then maybe schedule back to, back to work shopping uh, experience. Um, you could also do a dry run. So dry, like Amy was saying, they, our ro roads have changed. We're not, we haven't been driving routinely like before. So practice- A lot of construction. A South lot, a, and, and we already struggled with that before. So now that we're not kind of routinely driving, so practice a dry run. If possible, even go visit the, the workspace. Get accustomed and, and practice, practice, practice is so important. Um, also, monitor your emotions. We may even be inclined to want to ignore the anxiety that we're feeling or the worries that we may be experiencing related to this. Um, so monitor your emotions and find someone to talk to. Keep in mind that we're all at different pace when it comes to going back to work. So you may have a family member or a neighbor, friend that already returned to work. So have a conversation with them about what it was like for them. Yeah, and no, Carmen, what I'd like to add to that too is what about parents who are going back to work? They've been home with the kids. My daughter had more anxiety about me going out into the world when I went back out working than more for me. And she had all this anxiety. How do you talk to your kids about this? Awesome question. And I'd like to mention also the importance, remember, not only monitoring your emotions, but how we respond to that will show our kids. And it, remember, they're, they're kind of sponges. So if we're reacting with fear or nervousness or anxiety, have that open communication. So ask them, what are they feeling? What worries them? And have a conversation about it. As parents, the more we know what our kids are feeling or experiencing or worried about, will be better prepared and have the tools to meet their needs. So one for, for little kiddos, read a book with them about a character that goes to school or engage in a play activity where the, the toy you're playing with is going back to school or is having a new experience and talk them through it. Yeah, I, I, I got to talk to my teenager. She's on TikTok, so I got to do a TikTok dance. That's the only do way she's going to pay attention. Do a, do a dance about going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, some employers are choosing in-person work over hybrid or the work from home option altogether. What are some tips for overcoming anxiety as it relates to returning to work in person, but also some tips for these employers that are, are, are you know, they're, they're struggling with how do I do hybrid? How do I do in-person work? I mean, they may have great employees that they want to keep them, but they're noticing that this person's really struggling with coming back in. Yeah, uh, it's, it is. I hear it all over the news all the time. This is what people are talking about. So start with some of the tips for the employee. Um, you know, first is to identify what is it that's worrying you or causing you that anxiety. Sometimes when we feel anxiety, it's this you know, big ball of something that we can't put our finger on. When we're able to really sit down and think about it, is it that safety concern? Am I worried about my safety or am I worried about my time management? Now that I know that I'm what I'm anxious about, I can actually take action steps to do something about it. So if it is my safety, can I go ahead and talk to my employer about what are the safety protocols going to look like? You know, are there things that I can bring into the workplace to make me feel comfortable? And will that be okay with my employer? You know, we want to be proactive in these situations and, and come with those answers. Um, if it is time management, can I have that sit down conversation with my supervisor? And also, again, come with a plan. You know, I have to pick up my child at 3 p.m. because that's when they're done with school. Take them to aftercare or take them to, to you know, my cousin, my sister, my, my parents' home. Um, can I work this flexible work schedule? And this is exactly what I think it would look like would that work for you? You know, we want to have these open conversations and dialogues. I know a lot of people are saying right now, you know, forget it. My boss isn't giving me what I want. So I quit. I'm out. Um, and that may be the right decision for you. But I really encourage people to just try to sit down, have that conversation and work something out. Because as you said, Nikki, a lot of employers are really trying to work with their employees. And I think it just takes a lot of flexibility on both people's parts. How can I keep this employee? Because I know they're valuable 
valuable to us and they're a great worker. Um, and then from the employee standpoint, I like working for this company. I want to stay here. How do we come together? You know, um, the other thing that I would add on to it is that, again, this is a very changing time. And so just because my employer or my employee isn't doing it exactly the way that I want it to be, doesn't mean that that's not going to change in the next month, two months or three months. We're a year and a half into this, things continue to change. Everything that we think is set in stone is not. Um, so be flexible with yourself and be flexible with others as well. Yeah, no, I think that you brought up a great point. A lot of people have a problem asking for what they want. If this pandemic hasn't taught you, if you don't ask for it now, when are you going to ask for it? You might be surprised by the answer. You really might. You may not Absolutely. be, but you know, then you got your answer, right? At least you got an answer. At least you asked. Um, Carmen, we, we're going to expand on this, what we talked about before, but the, the form of anxiety that it's rearing its head, separation anxiety between parents, children, even pets. I, I, you know, I'm from the Caribbean. Our dogs used to live outside. So ha now that I live in the United States and I have a dog that lives inside, this dog is so needy. <laughs> So needy. What can what can we do to ease the anxiety that the parents are feeling, the children are feeling, as mom and dad head back to work in person? But also, I mean, I don't know. Are you are you a pet whisperer? I mean, because people probably need advice for their pets too. The dog can be going to doggy daycare or something. I don't know. I'm not a pet whisperer, but Amy is. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. So what what can we do to help deal with these th these anxieties and these feelings associated with, again, change. And, and I'd like to mention the, the kind of how we react to change. It's we, we foresee it as a threat. So think about we, we know something is changing, so we're either going to fear it, flight, or fight it. And it's kind of how our body is trained. So thinking about that, monitor what we are, how we're reacting to it, and what we could do about it. So with our kids going back to school, we as parents may feel that kind, kind of reluctance, am I doing the right thing? And keep in mind, empower yourself by thinking, okay, I am giving my child the tools necessary to be successful. And what does that look like? And how can I help? Um, so for parents that may, may miss their kids as they go back to school, it's a big step. It's always a big step starting a new school year, but especially this year, it's, it's different. Um, so one, one thing that you could do is create an album with your child. That way, as you go back to work and your kid goes to school, it reminds you, okay, they're at a safe place and I'm at a safe place. Keep in reinforcing those thoughts, those positive thoughts that'll help you cope with these big changes. Um, also, what one thing that can that can be helpful is as you're taking your child to school is having those uh, positive self statements and affirmations of telling yourself, okay, they're going to be okay, and I'm and educate yourself, find out resources like Amy mentioned, reach out to your employer or even reach out to the school. Um, regarding what are the safety precautions being put in place and what you need to know. I think that's very important as we start this new school year with what information do you need to know and also be cautious because you also don't want to have this too much information. Too much information can help increase that anxiety. So know what you need to know and that'll then know that that's enough for what the decisions you need to make so you don't overwhelm yourself with all this stimulus. So I just want to and yeah, about the pets, because yeah, I, I'm, I'm a pet mama. And, <laughs> you know, Nikki, you point out something really important. A lot of people are stressed about leaving their pets at home. And just like we've talked about before, it is practicing um, already taking those longer trips out of the house, an hour, two hours, practicing it, because they can develop anxiety and it can become dangerous for them. It's stressful for us. It's another reason for us to check off the list as to why we don't want to go back to work. And it, it doesn't have to be this way. Um, so, you know, paying attention to all aspects of our life. How do we make it easy for our kiddos? How do we make it easy for our pets? How do we make it easy for ourselves? Um, taking all of this into consideration can really make us pretty exhausted. And I just want to add that, you know, as you do go back, I remember the first time I went in, you know, to a meeting in an office and I went, oh, this is exhausting. Yes. <laughs> and so know that in the beginning, it will be tiring, but you will get used to it over time. Yeah. Now, Amy, th th our children have had a rough year in the in-person learning, the turn to virtual learning. And for many kids, learning through a computer was a, a hot mess, was a disaster, caused a lot of anxiety. A lot of them are in summer school right now who've never been in summer school. How can kids who had that learning loss feel that um, 
you know, just how can we ease anxiety of them going back to school in person? They, they already feel like they're behind. I, this is what I tell my kid. Most of what I learned in school, I really don't use anyway, but it, grades are important. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell their teachers that <laughs> I know but it's just saying like it's not the end of the world that one year was you know but what you're gonna what you think about how much you learned about yourself in this year about how to have the resilience to keep up you know and one take one day at a time because think of it as a year of loss or a year to catch up it's too much sometimes I'm just getting by hour by hour yeah, <laughs> you you really hit the nail on the head. It's true. It is one year and kids are resilient, right? Their brains are still developing. It's true. Some of those high achievers are going to be anxious about it. Um, but, you know, what you said is, is perfect, Nikki. It's, you know, there's so much more that's going to happen in your life. I would also add on to that, um, that, you know, as we go into a new year, most of us, even adults, are going to be nervous. So I think normalizing that anxiety for them, of course, I would be nervous going into a new school year, not knowing my teachers, not knowing um, my, a lot of my friends, because some kids have started a virtual year in a new school, and this will be the first time they're actually seeing yeah. their, their schoolmates in person. So normalizing it for them in a way of, yeah, sweetie, I, I can see how you would be nervous. I would be nervous too. Um, but then going back to what Carmen said and saying, here are the skills and here are the tools that I'm going to give you so that we can deal with some of that nervousness. Now, some tangible tasks that you can do, you know, if your kid is really struggling, you can of course, reach out to the teachers before the school year start if you already haven't been in touch with them. Find out if there's any readings that the student can catch up on. Um, you can also check out the Khan Academy is a great place to look at yes. to take some courses. And then you can also ask the teachers in the school if maybe there's a way that your kiddo can buddy up with another kiddo. Um, it's actually something that we've been doing for a long time. I remember when I moved to a new school, when I was a kiddo, my mom asked for it. And so they assigned me a buddy to, to walk into the doors with me from from day one and then also to check in with me at the end of school and show me you know show me where the lunchroom is show me where the ropes are make sure um, you reach out to to the teachers and if they can meet the teachers beforehand that really helps but knowing again like what you said Nikki um, you know they will be able to catch up it is not a lost year not if we talk world. about it that way they will think it but what you said is important we're focusing on what did we learn about ourselves what is that resiliency what have I taught myself and what did I learn that I'm going to take into this new school year so that I can thrive through it yeah. You know, Carmen, so many parents are so anxious going back to school, especially what's going on now with the new variants. You know, my daughter was able to get vaccinated. She's 14. But if you, especially if you have little ones, parents are so anxious about their kids going back. What can mom and dad do? Like you said, what they feel and what they project is what the kids are going to pick up on. Mm -hmm. How can we help them adjust and to help their kids adjust? Definitely focus on the process. And I think this ties a little bit to what Amy mentioned. So keep in mind the process, not just the outcome. So a lot of the times, maybe if we're worried and thinking, okay, what's this going to look like in December? What is this going to look like at the end of the school year? Think about the tools that you have to manage and also remind yourself what we're looking at now, we experienced it earlier on and going back to how resilient not only our children are, but also how we can be. So tying into that and thinking about what helped us overcome those obstacles early on, what did I learn from it, and how can I take that to go to overcome these current obstacles. So again, go, go, focusing on, on the positives, but also kind of lessons learned. So what, what would you have liked to have done differently that now you have the opportunity to do? A viewer sent in one of our question, um, you know, again, they're concerned about the COVID spikes and all the stuff that's on the news, right? What can, and either of you can take this, what can they do to get through the anxiety of going back, knowing that we're pretty much still in a pandemic? Sure, I can take that. Uh, you know, I, I think remembering 
excuse me, remembering that we've actually been through this before. Uh, we were we went through this a year ago where cases have risen. And knowing again that we are resilient people, we've done things in the past, we've gotten to this point. So what worked for us last time? What were the safety measures that we put into place? What are the self-care measures that we put into place so that we were able to stay comfortable? You know, again, this is going to be an adjustment. I wish I had a, a magic ball to tell you when this was going to be over and when our lives would feel like a little more normal. Um, but if I did, then I, I'd probably quit and be somewhere else. But, uh, you know, so it, it's just knowing again that we're going to have to make these adjustments. And if I start to feel that anxiety and it becomes overwhelming, it might be time to, to reach out to a professional and speak to them. Um, but again, making sure you're keeping in touch with your CDC, your local and state agencies, and following what your healthcare providers are saying will, will help us guide ourselves through this. You know, don't just jump on the bandwagon of whatever social media says. I, we we're talking a little bit about this before we jumped on, um, but following the authorities and knowing again, hey, you know what? I made adjustments last year and I can make adjustments again this year. I love that you said that we, we keep checking in with our mental health professionals. This mental health conversations pandemic has been crucial to helping us get through. It's going to be crucial to us getting past it or getting through it. It should be part of our lives. You know, this has been a great conversation. As we wrap up, ladies, are there any final messages you'd like to leave our viewers with? Carmen, you can start. Thank you so much for listening. And then one, one takeaway, be gradual and be also, when you're thinking of these steps, I know you mentioned that the fear that we're all experiencing or maybe worried, be gentle with yourself and also be also mindful of your own boundaries. So if you don't feel comfortable with something, respect that, voice that boundary, and then move at your own pace. Try it out, experiment. If you want to try out or go out and meet some friends, it's a gradual step. So don't push yourself to a point where maybe your, your anxiety stops you and holds you back to, to where you were step one. So be gradual about it, intentional. And again, listen to your to your body. It's telling you. So if, if you notice that your heart is, is maybe racing or your palms start sweating, take a few deep breaths and take a moment to ground yourself and then encourage and be gentle with yourself. And again, going back to those positive affirmations that you'll be able to do this educate yourself. What are the tools? Going back to what Amy said, make sure you know what, what is allowed and what isn't allowed. Always, and be mindful of not flooding yourself with information. So get know the information you need and then act when you have that information. Amy? I'll just add to that, you know, experiencing anxiety and worry when we go into new situations or changing situations, it's common and it's okay. We just want to be mindful about doing these things to take care of ourselves, addressing it, and knowing that we are probably much stronger and much more resilient than we think we are. Uh, I never thought I'd go through a pandemic in my life and I'm, I'm thriving, I'm figuring it out, and I know everyone out there can too. Just know that there are professionals here at Baptist Health, the Recovery Village, that can help you. Um, that, that is what we're here for at, at Community Health as well. Um, know that there are people there to help you and it's okay to ask for help. Now is a better time than any to do that. So thanks for having us, Nikki. Thank you both for sharing your amazing insight with us always. Remember viewers, you can always connect with us on our social media channel, channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Maybe I'll be able to get Carmen and Amy to do a TikTok video. Stay tuned. You never know. <laughs> Next month on August 24th, we'll be talking to those whose work did not allow them to work from home. We're talking about you folks, the frontline workers. We'll discuss how they've been affected during this pandemic and how we're going to help them cope and how they cope. Check out our resource blog for the latest news at baptisthealth.net slash news. You'll find a link there to all episodes of the Baptist Health Talk podcast as well. On behalf of everyone here at Baptist Health, we ask you to please stay safe and say yes to the COVID-19 vaccine. Have a great day. Find additional valuable health and wellness information on our resource blog at baptisthealth.net slash news. And be sure to interact with us on our social media channels for live and upcoming events. Resource Live is brought to you by Baptist Health South Florida. Healthcare that cares.